Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be a wet sold video for September 3rd all the way to September 23rd. I'm not going to be covering all the sales from that time period because a lot of these sales were already covered in other videos where we picked and shipped orders. I'll link those videos in the description box below so you can see those sales if you haven't seen those videos already. Let's get started. The first thing that sold was a pair of Football America youth size padded football pants. We picked these up at a garage sale for $3 and they sold on best offer for $23 even. Next up was a men's J Crew plaid flannel button down shirt. We also got this at a garage sale. We paid $2 for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $15.58. Next up was a vintage set of two Coca-Cola restaurant style glasses. We got these at a thrift store. We paid $2.16 and they also sold for $15.98. We didn't make a huge profit on these. This is not something that we would pick up again. They were hard to ship also, so not something that we would actively seek out again. Um, also, I was gonna mention that the other thing I've noticed is eBay has changed the way they are. They've updated the app again. And when I went in to get the pictures of the listed items or the sold items for this video, I noticed that the displayed price on the items was the original listed price instead of our sold price. So I'm not sure that the price on the photos that I'm going to show for this video will necessarily match the verbal price I'm giving, but the verbal price I'm giving is the price that we sold the items for, not necessarily the price you see on the screen. Okay, next up was a Vera Bradley trifold wallet. This was a brand new with tags Vera Bradley wallet that we got at the reseller garage sale. We paid $3.28 for this wallet and it sold for $28.08. Um, it didn't move very quickly and actually that is true every time we pick up a Vera Bradley item. Even if it's in perfect condition or new with tags, I find that Vera Bradley just doesn't move very fast. So it's not something I pick up very often. I do pick it up if it's new with tags or if it's in pristine condition and looks new because eventually it will sell and we will make a profit on it. But Vera Bradley is just not as hot as it used to be and it doesn't move very quickly, at least not for me. Next up was a Zara black and white tweed fringe jacket. It had jeweled buttons on it. So it was kind of a, you know, an evening style dressy jacket for, for a woman. Uh, that we got also at the reseller garage sale. So we paid $3.28 for that also because we had gotten a bulk deal at that garage sale. This jacket was also new with tags and it sold for $58.38. This was a very nice jacket. Um, it did kind of take a long time to sell as well, but it was a more expensive item and I think it just needed the right buyer to come along. But it did not take actually as long as I thought it would to sell because it was a more expensive item and we did get positive feedback on that. Like I said, it was a very nice jacket. Next up was a pair of American Eagle Outfitters size 12 women's jeans. These we got at a garage sale for just 50 cents and they sold on best offer for $17 even. Next up was something that I didn't even know you could sell until I picked these up in a big box lot of items at an estate sale. And these were vintage 1980s and 1990s house and lock keys. We had picked these up in that box of kind of garage type items, car type items at the Sugartown estate sale. And there were just miscellaneous house keys in there. And true to our ethos. We list everything that we come across unless it's like true garbage. So I lotted all of these together. I had seen that other people people were selling house keys. So I guess people collect keys. I, I don't know what the purpose is of, of selling or buying old keys, but we listed them all together. They sold for $11.99 and 
We had paid $15 for this box in total and I had broken down our cost for each of the listings at 75 cents. So if you ever come across old vintage keys, they will sell. And that's true for old vintage car keys as well. We've also sold the, the car keys from that box sold first, actually. Next up was a, an item that belonged to me. It was just something I didn't wear anymore. It was a women's Max Studio long sleeve knit top. It kind of had some braiding around the neckline and on the sleeves and some ruching as well. This um, sold for $12.68. And unfortunately, we received neutral feedback on this. And it was, it, this neutral feedback stated that the shirt was itchy. The fabric was itchy. And I thought, well, that's kind of unfair feedback because that has nothing to do with the customer service that we provided. That's kind of like a product review. So I reached out to eBay for Business on Facebook. And I notified them, you know, I, I said, I realize this is just neutral feedback, but I don't think this is fair feedback because this is more like a product review and less about the customer service that we offered. The buyer did not give us a chance to fix it. Can this be removed? Or what is your suggestion on dealing with this is kind of how I worded it to eBay for business. And I was surprised that they actually took the feedback down because um, I'm not sure if the guy misunderstood me or, or what, but he said that because we had measurements of the item up, he would remove the feedback. So I don't know if he misinterpreted what the buyer was saying in the feedback about the product, but he removed the feedback and I was glad about that. I was surprised that I actually was successful in having that feedback removed, frankly, but the feedback was removed. And honestly, I think that's fair because that feedback had absolutely nothing to do with the service that we provided and everything to do with actual product review, which people shouldn't be leaving a product review on your feedback on eBay. Next up was an item that we found in the Goodwill bins and it was an Alabama Sweet Tea Company mason jar lidded drink glass or like a tumbler with a straw. So, you know, what am I saying? It's, you know, just a drink glass with a straw. <laughs> I'm overcomplicating this. <laughs> uh, this we paid 92 cents in the Goodwill bins and it sold for $20.99 and we got nice positive feedback on that item. Next up was a painting by the artist Joyce Gilbert. We have sold several of her paintings previously. We got these paintings from the custom picture frame shop that we own where we used to sell art in that custom picture frame shop and no longer sell art. So now we're selling it through our eBay store. This was a small painting. She does watercolor. And this one was called Neiman's Outhouse. She had a whole series called Neiman's Outhouse and we have sold several of those. This was the variation seven of that. This sold for $13.99 and we received positive feedback on that. Next up was something from the B-Stock liquidation lot. This was a Netgear Orbi, which was a Wi-Fi system. This we sold for $151.98 and we had paid $47.18 for each of the listings from that liquidation palette, which I have already linked in several videos before. So I'll just link it in the description box below. I won't link it above. But we did get positive feedback on that. Actually, the buyer sent us several nice messages about that particular purchase. So we were very grateful that she was happy. Next up was an item that I got at a garage sale. It was a Gymboree set. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, if I can get it for cheap enough, I will usually pick up Gymboree because there are still people out there that collect kids' Gymboree clothes. And so if I can get it for cheap enough, it just always moves. I don't make tons of money on it, but it always moves. So I always pick it up. This was the series Alpine Sweetie. And like I've mentioned in previous videos, I always look up the style name and there are Gymboree websites that are dedicated to just showing you what the style names are. I will try to link one of the Gymboree fan sites that I use to look up those Gymboree style names in the description box below to be helpful. 
but this one I paid two dollars for the set and it sold for twelve dollars and sixty eight cents so like like you can see you just don't make tons of money on it but they always sell I never keep Jamboree in stock for more than a year or so so you can just always count on it selling. And if I can pick something up that I know with assuredness is gonna sell, then it's something I'm gonna pick up. Next up was a pair of Nike baseball pants in youth size that were brand new with tags. We got these at a garage sale. We paid $3 for them and they sold for our full asking price of $24.49, but the buyer did apply a coupon or a discount, I believe. Next up was a brand new and packaged banner that you would place on your garage door for a decoration. We got this at a garage sale where the guy running the garage sale was quite the salesman. I will link that video above and in the description box below. It was funny to listen to him. He like you would touch something at his sale and he would be like, oh yeah, man, let's I'm going to get you to buy that. And he would talk us into purchasing almost anything we touched and we were buying stuff just because we liked this guy so much <laughs> but this we bought two of these banners from him and this is the first one that sold we paid a dollar for this at his garage sale and it sold for twenty dollars even on best offer so this is not an item that we would have typically picked up at a garage sale but you know his personality talked us into picking it up and it ended up being worth it so glad we picked that up and we still have another one to sell so hopefully it'll sell before christmas this year we do have a couple of watchers on it so next up was a vintage pair of harley davidson motorcycle or work boots these we got at an estate sale which I'll link above and in the description box below. We did have to buy brand new laces for these work boots, which made them a lot more costly than we were hoping that they would be. So our out of pocket expense for these boots was $13.53. And they ended up only selling for $35.18 because they did have some condition issues. So we didn't make much of a profit on these, just a couple of dollars, but we did get positive feedback on them. So there was that. Probably not something I would pick up again if I had noticed that they had the lace issues and the condition issues, but the room that we were in when we were picking up these items was kind of dark, so it was hard to notice those things. Next up was a women's plus size t-shirt. It had an owl on the front and the brand was Free Kisses. It was just a really cute t-shirt. I picked it up based on style, not for brand. It sold for $14.18 and we had paid $1 for that at a garage sale. Next up was a Soma brand nightgown. Soma is a very high-end intimates brand and it sells very well. So if you ever see Soma branded items, I would definitely recommend picking those up. You can sell bras, nightgowns, robes, things like that. That Soma nightgown sold for $28 even on best offer and we had paid $4 for that at a garage sale. Next up was an item that I got in my Stitch Fix box and I really loved this top. It was so cute and it was so flattering, but after I wore it once or twice, I just decided that it did not fit me. So I decided to sell it and it was a black surplus top by 41 Hawthorne. It sold for $20 even. I had purchased everything, which was very unusual from my Stitch Fix box that particular time. So I just said that my cost was zero because I considered this my discount item. Next up was a Amscan brand Day of the Dead adult size Halloween costume. It was not new, it was used, but it was in really good condition. It looked like it had only been worn once and we still had all the packaging for it. This we got at a garage sale for $2 and it sold for our full asking price of $24.49, but the buyer did apply a discount or a coupon to it. Next up was a vintage kids book called Frog and Toad Are Friends. This was gifted to us from a family member to sell. And surprisingly, this book sold for $18.99. So I don't know why this book held some value. I mean, it was a vintage book, but vintage books don't always hold value. But I don't know what it was particularly about this book, book that gave it value but it did sell for $18.99, which is our full asking price. And we were very grateful for that. It kind of was a longer tail item, took a little while to sell, but we did make quite a bit of profit on that. Obviously we had no cost involved with it because it was gifted to us, but just the sale price alone was, was surprising. 
Next up was a 2019 McDonald's Happy Meal toy. It was from the movie Minions Rise of Gru. And this one was the disco roller skate version of a Minion. And when I researched it, it seemed like this one was one of the more rare options. This one was number 17. It was not new in the package, it was loose, but I had a really hard time finding any other listings of this roller skate version. So I knew that it was kind of hard to come by. I couldn't find very many in Sold. I couldn't find very many in Terapeak. And the ones I could find in Terapeak were selling for a little bit higher than the ones, than the other varieties that were listed. So I priced it a little bit higher and I knew that it would sell. And I had someone that was interested in it and they kept lowballing me. And I was like, no, I know this one is worth a little bit more. I'm not going to take your offer. <laughs> Finally, he, after a couple of tries of lowballing me and after some time, a few weeks, he finally came back and offered me a price that I thought was fair, which I accepted, which was $9. And I accepted that. And our out-of-pocket cost on that was 10 cents at a thrift store from a toy bag. Next up was a toddler pageant dress, or it looked to me like a pageant dress. It was a very overly decorated dress that seemed like a style of dress that you would use for a pageant dress. The brand was Law and Calm or L-A and Calm. Uh, it was a yellowed organza dress with sequins and some different bling on it. I had picked this up because I thought, I wonder if something like this would sell. I wonder what the sell-through rate, I wonder what the timeline on selling something like this would be. So I had picked it up out of curiosity at the thrift store. And I had paid $5.41 for it. It did take a little long to sell. Probably not something I would pick up again just because of the length of time it took to sell, but it did sell for $26.59, which was our full asking price minus a discount or coupon that the buyer applied. So we did make a good profit on it. I just don't want to sit on items that long, so I probably wouldn't pick something up like that again. Next up was a pair of women's Crocs slip-on. They were like a boat style shoe. These sold for $20.99, which again was our full asking price, I think minus a discount. We had gotten these at a garage sale for $5. Those sold pretty quickly. Next up was another pair of women's shoes. These were Cole Haan leather heels. We got these at a church rummage sale for $2 and they sold for $35 even on best offer. Next up was something that sold extremely fast and this is something that when I comped it, there were none other listed, there were none other and sold. This is something that when you're researching and you can't find any comps like that, you really just have to guess and do your best naming a price that you think is reasonable, but you know that you have the only one and that if someone is coming looking for this, it's going to be something that they're willing to pay, but you know you have the only one, so you can fetch a little bit higher price than maybe something similar to it, I guess, is, is my recommendation. So, you know, maybe videos, sports videos are going for $9.99. You could ask $14.99 or $16.99 because you have the only one. If someone's coming and looking for it, they're going to be willing to pay an extra $5 or $7 for something. $5 or $7 is reasonable. But, you know, $99.99, they're not going to be willing to pay that for something just because it's rare. You know, you have to think about it in those terms, I guess. So that's how I thought about it. I maybe could have gotten a little bit more seeing as it sold so quickly, but I also want my items to move. I don't want to be unreasonable. They paid full price for it. So obviously my price was within reason. And I don't question myself too, too much when something sells fast. I do sometimes make a mental note of that. You know, maybe I could have asked a few dollars more but I don't overly question myself in situations like that. Anyway, this was a video sports card, Mickey Mantle. So it was a VHS, brand new sealed. We had gotten this at a garage sale and it I had listed it for $12.99. Based on my research of similar items, I had upped the price a little bit and we had paid $1 for that at a garage sale and it sold for our asking price and we got positive feedback on it. It sold within a day of listing it. Next up was a an item that belonged to my daughter. 
It was a Justice brand jean jacket and it had emoji patches all over it. This was a gift to her, so we had no cost on it and it sold for $23.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was one of those vintage airline crew bags that we got at a garage sale. We paid just $1 for this bag. This one was not as neat or interesting looking as those other ones from the previous What Sold video that sold. Those were leather and these, this one was like a nylon material, but this one did still sell for $42.99. This also had some staining on it, but this still sold for our full asking price. I think we still have one or two of these airline bags left to sell and they do have a significant amount of interest on it. I'm just trying to either wait for the right buyer or I may need to lower the prices on those a little bit. Those also have some staining. Next up was a Lifehouse DVD brand new sealed. We had gotten this at the Goodwill bins the day that we had found all those brand new sealed DVDs. We had paid 67 cents for this and it sold for our full asking price of $9.99. Next up was one of the vinyls that we found at the thrift store. This one was Love Shine by the band Confunction. This we paid $1.03 for and it sold for $14 even on best offer. Next up was something we got at a garage sale. I had picked up a original Xbox controller and I had paid $5 for it. And then when I got home, I realized that the cord on the controller had fraying and was damaged and was not sellable. So instead of just throwing the whole thing away, I looked at it a little bit more carefully and realized it had a, this breakaway dongle extension on it, which I could take off and that part was still in good condition. I could sell that. So that this is what we sold from that. It was called a Xbox green breakaway dongle extension cable adapter for a wired Xbox controller. And I had paid $5 for the controller, but we had to throw the controller part away. So our cost on this item was $5, but we were trying to recoup what we can from that mistake purchase. Uh, this item sold for $11.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was one of the free magazines from our next door deal that we made. This was called Southern Lady Presents Travel South and it sold for $12.78. And like I said, we had no cost. Next up was a Pokemon card that we found in the Goodwill bins that was remarkably still in really good condition. This was a 2012 Pokemon Dark Explorers Eevee Surprise Attack card. We got this in the bins. We paid 61 cents for it because I had broken down our cost that day and averaged it out. And this card sold for $3.59. Next up was a really beautiful needlepoint. Um, I think my mom might have done this needlepoint. Um, either way, this needlepoint, I believe, belonged to our family and used to hang in our house. But it was a gorgeous needlepoint. And it was framed and matted beautifully. Um, this was gifted to me by my family to sell and it sold for $139.98 and went overseas through the global shipping program and we had sold that on offer to buyer and we got positive feedback on that and I'm not surprised because that item was was beautiful. And last but not least I will go over all of the collectible cards that sold from my husband's personal collection. For this What Sold video, we did not list or sell any high value cards, or if we did, they were covered in other videos that I linked in the description box below. But we did have some low value cards, meaning cards valued at $10 or under. And for those cards, we sold four cards total for a total dollar value of $17.26. And that wraps up this What Sold video. If you want to see all of the other items that we sold during this period that weren't covered in this video, you can check out the other videos linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure to hit that thumbs up button, really helps out our channel. And if you enjoyed this video and you're not already subscribed, we would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel with the notification bell turned on so you can be kept informed of all of our latest content. Thank you so much for joining and we will catch you on the flip side.